Hello, I'm Simon Whistler, you're watching Top 10's Net, and in the video today we're looking at the top 10 survivors of skydiving accidents. Yes, people do survive. In all honesty, the sport of skydiving is relatively safe. According to most sources, skydiving fatalities, on average, amount to about 30 out of every 100,000 jumps. An individual is more likely to die in a car accident than face death as a result of skydiving. Or for a more comparative analogy, scuba diving averages more deaths, with about 47 deaths per 100,000 dives. Hundreds of thousands of people jump out of planes every year, recreationally, competitively, and occupationally, with the vast the majority of these people reaching the ground safely. The thing about skydiving, though, is that when something does go terribly wrong, parachutes not opening, or some similar catastrophic failure or mishap, then your options become very limited. Hurtling towards the Earth at speeds in excess of 100 miles per hour? Well, one can imagine the end result more often than not. Surprisingly, however, not every skydiving accident ends with a horrific and bloody pile of smashed body parts. In fact, a fairly high number of folks, relatively speaking, have actually survived harrowing skydiving plunges and impacts. In the video today, we're going to be looking at the ones who made the fall and survived. The Top 10 Survivors of Skydiving Accidents Number 10. Daniel Farr Imagine actually deciding to go through with the experience and then during your first tandem jump where you parachute attached to another person, usually an experienced skydiver, the instructor dies in mid-air. Welcome to Daniel Farr's Brief World. Farr's a soldier in the US Army who specializes in military intelligence. His girlfriend presented him with a skydiving trip as a Christmas present. Farr's tandem partner was a gentleman by the name of George Chip Steele, a very experienced skydiver with well over 8,000 jumps to his credit. The two jumped out of the plane and did a brief freefall, and Chip deployed the chute as expected. Everything was seemingly going well until, all of a sudden, everything went to hell in a handbasket. Far realized that Chip was unresponsive, both to his questions and any actions, actually the lack of any actions regarding the approaching ground. While the military had not given young Far any parachute training, it did teach him to remain calm under extreme conditions. Far assessed the situation and took control of the parachute toggles, just like he had seen on TV, of course, and managed to maneuver well enough to avoid approaching trees, ultimately landing safely not too far away from the designated drop zone. Far then unsuccessfully performed CPR on Chip, with coroners later stating that Chip had suffered a heart attack. The harrowing experience, however, was not one to discourage Mr. Far. He expressed a desire to jump again, despite his parents' warnings to the contrary. Number 9. Dave Hodgman and a guy named Frank. This incident was captured on film and was a noteworthy news item when it happened in 1985 in Victoria, Australia. Mr. Hodgman was jumping at an elevation of about 12,000 feet as one member of a skydiving formation. Things didn't go according to plan as Hodgman inadvertently opened his chute while he was directly under another skydiver. This would be a guy named Frank. Frank didn't see Hodgman either, and was opening his own chute at about the same moment as Hodgman. Two skydivers trying to share the same space at the same time is right for a disaster, and Dave crashed immediately into Frank. The violent impact knocked Frank unconscious and tangled the lines of both deployed chutes. Frank's chute remained deployed and inflated, while Hodgman's chute would inflate and deflate randomly. The entire situation was causing both men to be violently flailed about. Additionally, with one chute essentially trying to support the weight of two men, they were falling faster than one desires in these situations, finally crashing into a crowded parking lot, amazingly between some parked cars. Oh, and they also both lived. Hodgman had pretty extensive injuries, while Frank came away relatively unhurt. To his credit, Hodgman was back to jumping out of planes as soon as his injuries healed. Number 8. James Boole I suppose when you jump out of airplanes for fun, you have to accept the possibility that something terrible could go wrong. On the other hand, with extreme sports types, it's that possibility that adds that extra level of excitement to the activity. Such could be the case with Mr. Bool. Bool is a cameraman who specializes in filming and participating in skydiving and base jumping competitions. Base jumping, for those not familiar with the term, is the sport of jumping off stationary objects like mountains and bridges and waiting until the last possible second to deploy a parachute. It's pretty dangerous. 
It was during one such filming excursion that Mr. Boole ran into a spot of trouble. Filming a documentary in Russia, Boole and a partner were performing a jump. Boole, concentrating on filming, was relying on his partner to radio him when they were close to the ground and he needed to pull his chute. A communication problem prevented this, and instead, Boole and the snow-covered ground ran into each other. Falling 6,000 feet and moving at well over 100 miles per hour would usually spell a grisly end. The Briton, however, apparently crashed into a deep snowdrift amidst the rocky terrain that was below him. Boole suffered a rather nasty broken back and rib, but otherwise wasn't any worse for wear. This particular incident, ironically, was captured on film. Number 7. Ivan Chizov Mr. Chizov deserves a spot on this list based on the bravery that was required that led to his survival situation. Ivan Chizov was a lieutenant in the Soviet Air Force during World War II. During a combat sortie, Chizov's bomber was attacked and heavily damaged by German fighter planes. At the time, Chizov's bomber was flying at an altitude of 22,000 plus feet. The extent of the damage to the bomber necessitated the crew members to exit the plane in a prompt fashion. Uh, the problem, however, besides the fact that they were jumping out of a disintegrating plane, was that there was still quite a bit of aerial combat going on around the time Chizov really needed to leave the plane. As German pilots were known to shoot at tempting targets, such as helpless airmen dangling in the air beneath a floating parachute, Chizov jumped from the plane with the thought of not deploying his chute until he fell past most of the ongoing fighting. Not a bad idea. Unfortunately for Chizov, he blacked out while he was free-falling. Plummeting at speeds of around 150 miles an hour, Chizov's unconscious body hit a snow-covered gorge and rolled, flipped, and crashed its way to the bottom. Despite suffering a broken pelvis as well as injuries to his spinal cord, Chizov recovered quickly and was reportedly back in the seat flying again within a few months. Now that is dedication. Number 6. Laurice Butler Parachutes that fail to operate can happen anywhere. Laurie Butler, a young lady from South Africa, discovered that personally on what she thought was a routine skydiving trip in 2010. The setup sounds very much like every other similar incident. A normal exit from the plane followed by an uneventful freefall. As if falling to earth like a rock can be described as uneventful. What happened next, however, had Ms. Butler resorting to prayer as her last option. First, she attempted to deploy her primary chute and it didn't open. After several tries, she then attempted to deploy her reserve chute, and it didn't open either. One can only imagine the blood-curdling fear that must occur in such a circumstance. Ms. Butler said her only course of action left was prayer. She recalls thinking, God, save me please. Hurling toward the ground from 3,000 feet, the impact left Ms. Butler injured with a broken leg and a concussion, but alive. What makes this particular story even more compelling is that Ms. Butler claims she had changed her mind about jumping while still in the door of the plane, and that her instructor literally pushed her out of the plane despite her protest. Butler describes holding onto the plane's door frame and the instructor pushing her several times, resulting in her falling out of the plane. I'm not entirely sure, but isn't that like against the law or something? Number 5. Hands Lange we have already mentioned the sport of base jumping. Waiting until the absolute last second to pull the chute results in, I suppose, a more exhilarating experience. Mr. Lange, however, got a bit more than feelings of euphoria on a base jump that went wrong in 2008. Lange, leaping from the top of a mountain in Norway, found out what happens when poor planning, cockiness, and a lack of wings come together. Simply put, it spells trouble for folks jumping off mountains. The peak of the mountain had an elevation on the low side of 5,000 plus feet. Lange hurled himself off this peak and was falling at upwards of 100 miles per hour next to a mountain wall. You might ask yourself now what couldn't go wrong. Realizing that he and the mountain were in too close proximity to one another, Lange tried to maneuver away from the wall by deploying his chute. Unfortunately, in this battle of man versus mountain, the mountain won. Lange was battered repeatedly into the rocks protruding from the side of the mountain, all the while the lines of his chute becoming entangled, which didn't allow for a slower descent. The whole ordeal came to a crashing end, yes pun intended, when Lange impacted with a tree at the base of the mountain. Not too many folks can say they survived a fall off the top of a mountain, but Lange can. Not only did he live, he only suffered a broken leg for his troubles. Not bad, all things considered. It certainly didn't deter Lange, who promised to get right back in the swing of base jumping when he recovered from his injuries. Oh yeah, and of course, this was all caught on tape. Number 4. Gareth Griffiths Mr. Griffiths is an individual who was very familiar with the physical nature of sports as a result of being a professional rugby player in his native Great Britain. This did nothing to prepare him for the tragedy he would experience with his foray into tandem skydiving. Paired with an experienced instructor, Michael Costello, who also happened to be a state representative for Massachusetts, the two were prepared to make the same jump that thousands before have safely performed. On this day, however, events went horribly wrong. 
After exiting the plane and enjoying a short freefall, the instructor attempted to deploy the chute. For reasons unknown, the chute failed to inflate properly and the instructor was unable to recover as the two rocketed to the ground. A last-ditch effort by Costello is credited with saving Griffiths's life as he twisted seconds prior to impact and placed his own body between his charge and the ground. Griffiths lived but suffered a severe injury to his back. Doctors, in fact, were shocked that Griffiths was able to survive the impact of hitting the ground at such an extreme velocity, even taking into account Costello's efforts to lessen the impact of the collision with his own body. Yet survive he did, and the selfless sacrifice of Michael Costello certainly played a part. Number 3. Laverne Everett At 80 years of age, Ms. Everett had one unfulfilled desire. She really wanted to jump out of a plane. With the popularity and availability of tandem jumping, Ms. Everett decided to take the plunge. Remember how the last one we talked about went? Well, to her dismay, the experience almost turned out to be her last one. Everett was a bit hesitant to leave the plane. As she looked out the door to the open sky, her knees buckled. Her jump partner, to whom she was strapped to, gave her a slight prod towards the opening and a bit of encouragement, and out they went. Unfortunately, it seems that Everett wasn't as securely attached to her partner as they thought. Almost immediately, Everett began to slip out of her harness. Remember, Everett was basically along for the ride, and the instructor was the only one with a parachute. If she lost her partner, she would have lost her safe ride to the ground. Everett's partner had to physically hold onto her to prevent her from plummeting to the ground. Even the cameraman, who jumped to film the experience, attempted to maneuver in close to assist, to no avail. Everett was left dangling thousands of feet in the air as her partner struggled desperately to hold on to her. Amazingly, Everett, who apparently has nerves of steel, didn't even scream while clinging desperately to her jump partner. She later stated during an interview that she wasn't even really scared. Everett's partner managed to hold on long enough to get them both to the ground safely, and Everett only suffered a few scrapes and bruises from the landing. And of course she came away with an amazing story to tell her grandchildren. Number 2. Nicholas Alkmaid the men and women who put on uniform for whatever nation are folks who exhibit a high degree of bravery and dedication, and that has to be respected and admired. Such is the case of Mr. Alkmeet. This particular incident is not technically a skydiving accident, but damn if it isn't as compelling as hell. Ironically, this is another chap who was serving in the air force of his nation during World War II. A first sergeant in the Royal Air Force, Alkmeet was a crew member of a British bomber that was attacked by German fighters on a bombing run. Alchemade's bomber was heavily damaged, on fire, and spinning out of control. Alchemade was left with very few options. He was either going to burn to death with the approach of the raging fire, or die when his plane hit the fast approaching ground. Deciding that he didn't like either of those options, Alchemade decided to jump out of the plane without a parachute. It had burned up in the fire. He was about 18,000 feet in the air when he made this momentous decision, and so he fell. The brave crewman crashed through snow covered pine trees that broke his fall and landed in cushioning snow below. According to reports, he only suffered a sprained ankle and was a bit dazed. He supposedly looked around and lit a cigarette. Even his German captors were amazed by the harrowing tale of Alchemade's experience and awarded him a certificate indicating as such. Wow. Number 1. Shania Richardson West Shania Richardson, or West since her marriage, experienced what no one should, especially on their first solo skydiving jump while pregnant. Unfortunately, this is exactly what happened to this young lady from Joplin, Missouri. The story became a media buzz not only because of the incredible fact that Shana survived her ordeal, but that she learned she was several weeks pregnant while being treated for her injuries in the hospital. Shania's story begins almost immediately into her jump. Once she pulled her chute and it deployed, she went into an uncontrollable spin. Realizing that there was a problem, whether it was her equipment or her inexperience is still debated amongst fellow skydivers, Shania cut away her main chute and deployed her reserve chute. This didn't help either, as the rescue chute didn't function properly either, again, either because of equipment failure or inexperience. Instead of slowing Shania's descent, she continued to spin uncontrollably and plummeted toward the ground at over 50 miles per hour, smacking face first into a parking lot. Shania's leg was broken, as well as her pelvis in two places, and she lost a few teeth. Most importantly, her unborn child, who she was completely unaware of, was completely fine. Shania gave birth to a healthy baby boy in June the following year. This survival incident was caught completely on film. Shania reportedly went skydiving only one more time after the accident, stating that she wanted to prove that she could do it before giving up the sport. And finally, that's someone with a bit of common sense. 
So thank you for watching that video about people who survived skydiving accidents. If you like this one about extreme sports, you'll probably also like our other video about medieval sports that may or may not kill you, and another one about why freediving is the coolest sport you've never heard of. We put out loads of videos, a video actually one day uh, every day, seven days a week, so do subscribe to our channel for brand new content. Also, I'd love it if you clicked the like button if you did enjoy this video, and again, thank you for watching.